Good morning. Welcome to the video, CPA. Today we're going to talk about C corporations. Uh, we've talked about uh, S corporations. We've talked about LLCs, partnerships, and proprietorships. And so today we're going to talk about C corporations a little bit and um, talk about uh, what they are, how they're taxed, uh, how they're set up, basically. So let's get into it. Um, um, Here's our disclaimer for uh, our affiliate links. If you buy something from this channel, you actually get a commission. So I just need to disclose that. Educational disclaimer. And what is a C corporation? Okay, a C corporation uh, set up under uh, the uh, Chapter 1 of Article 26, uh, Subchapter C, whereas an S corporation is set up under Subchapter S of this same chapter. So, uh, a uh, C corporation is an independent entity. It's taxed by, uh, on its own. Uh, it's not a flow through. Uh, an S corporation is a flow through entity, but a C corporation is not. It's its own taxed entity, and so uh, that is a major difference between a C corporation and an S corporation. Uh, established at the state level, you apply with the Secretary of State uh, of the state that you want to be incorporated in and uh, you've got limited liability for the shareholders. So uh, that's basically what it is. Um, not a bad uh, way to uh, do business. Most major companies in the United States are C corporations. Smaller companies uh, are generally S corporations. Uh, big companies aren't allowed if they've got over uh, so many shareholders to be an S corporation. So that's why they uh, are C corporations. But uh, uh, good way to do business usually although if if you've got a small business uh, an s corporation is uh, a better way to go than a c corporation generally okay corporate tax rate right now is currently 21 percent that was uh, made in 2017 uh, one advantage of a c corporation is that the fringe benefits are taxed less so if you've got uh, insurance um, and uh, other fringe benefits, those are going to be taxed less than if um, you had an S corporation or a partnership or even a proprietorship. And you could actually provide more, more benefits uh, through a C corporation. So uh, uh, one advantage is that you can split the income between the corporation and the owners, uh, especially if you've got a fairly small C corporation and uh, then the owners uh, would pay a lesser rate and the C corporation would pay a lesser tax rate as well. Um, right now, the C corporation got a flat tax rate of 21%. Now, I, I don't know how long that will last, but that's the rate right now. Uh, and as I mentioned, limited liability for the shareholders is a big thing. So um, uh, any of the corporations, the S corporation, the LLC also offer that type of an advantage. Let's look at the disadvantages. Um, there is an increased cost of doing business with with a C corporation and an S corporation. I mean, both these, if you're going to incorporate, you've got a cost of incorporation, first of all. Now, in some states, that's not much. I live in Idaho, and you can send them 100 bucks and uh, do your own corporation almost. So it's not that expensive. But if you pay an attorney, you're probably looking at 1000 bucks. So it's uh, um, you've got to keep that in mind. Um, with a um, C corporation, you have to remember that the employees are, uh, or the owners, are employees of that corporation. And so um, you do have to have uh, payroll, you have to have uh, payroll set up for um, anybody, anybody. I mean, you've, if you've got a C corporation, you're going to have an employee of it. So uh, um, you're going have to have, have payroll costs, and that is an increased cost of doing business. Uh, also, you've got uh, accounting, you've got minutes, you've got annual meetings, and of course an S corporation has the same type of thing, but um, um, the thing that you need to be aware of with S corporations or C corporations is that they act as independent entities and that corporate veil does not get pierced, uh, because if it does, well then you really don't have a corporation, you can be sued, so you're limited liability goes out the door. But anyway, um, another thing is double taxation of benefits. If you declare a dividend, for example, or dividends, if you declare a dividend, for example, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be deductible by the corporation. 
um, and it is taxable to uh, the shareholders. So uh, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you have to use the Curl method of accounting. That This doesn't apply to most small businesses anyway because uh, they can use the cash basis of accounting. But if you're over $25 million now, and this was raised in 2017 actually from $10 million, but uh, if your annual gross receipts exceed $25 million, you've got to use the accrual basis of accounting. And I, I really haven't explained the accrual basis and the cash basis of accounting uh, in these seminars, and I'll try to do that in the future. But uh, uh, that is something, uh, you know, that's not a big drawback, but the accrual basis of accounting is a little bit different. So. Uh, um, you're recognizing revenue before you actually put it in the bank and a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, and uh, also with a corporation I mentioned that it's not a pass, a CEEP corporation is not a pass-through entity like an S corporation. So if you've got losses in that C corporation you're not going to be able to pass them through to the shareholders like you can with an S corporation. Those losses stay in the corporation and they can't, uh, they got to be deducted against corporate income. So um, um, they can be carried back, they can be carried forward, but they have to be deducted against corporate income. All right, so those are the major disadvantages. Uh, some of the elements of taxation, they file what's called a Form 1120, and the S Corporation will file an 1120S. Uh, C Corporation just files an 1120. That's a U.S. corporate income tax return. It's got to be filed by the 15th of March, usually, if your year-end is a calendar year-end, or the third day, or the third, 15th day of the third month after the end of the corporate year, if you've got a year-end that's other than a calendar year-end. Corporation, like I said, is not a flow-through entity. Uh, owners are employees of the corporation and uh, you've got to pay estimated tax payments uh, with a corporation just like you, just like an individual has to do. So uh, those are paid on a quarterly basis and so um, uh, you have to estimate the income quarterly and see, uh, you know, get a good estimate of how much taxes uh, you might be owed. So you pay as you go with a, uh, a C corporation, okay? Uh, the Actually, the U.S. Uh, the 1120 is a little bit easier, I think, to fill out than the 1120S. I, uh, 1120S is probably uh, one of the more challenging returns that uh, you would do as an owner or as a uh, small business CPA. And uh, but the 1120 is fairly straightforward. Now it can get if you're a bigger corporation, it can get very complex. I. Uh, Worked in a tax department for a major corporation, and their uh, 1120 was um, a foot thick when they uh, uh, when they got it all all ready to go. So I mean, uh, there are they can be very complex, but uh, for the most part, they're not. For small small businesses, um, they're not. And I basically, uh, if you're a small CPA, um, even a you know unless you're one of the bigger firms like uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers or uh, Deloitte, uh, I mean, you're dealing with uh, smaller, a lot of smaller type businesses. So most of them are not that difficult. All right, that's it. Um, C Corporation's a good way to do business. Uh, if you're a small business, I would choose an S Corporation first, but um, uh, C Corporation is not a bad way to do uh, not a bad way to do business, and um, so you might consider that in the, uh, in the future. Um, anyway, I've uh, enjoyed doing this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, uh, hit like and uh, give us some comments if you got any questions. Thank you very much.